Hi, uh, welcome to today's devotional podcast with Dr. Jacob Al. Uh, we are coming back to our series on uh, Christian marriage, uh, sexual intimacy in Christian marriage. Uh, uh, that is naked and not ashamed, uh, naked and not ashamed. Um, last time we looked at um, the uh, different phases of uh, sexual intimacy or love making in the context of marriage. And so today we're going to look at the phase one of uh, what is called the arousal, arousals, arousal stage. Uh, there are three phases of uh, sexual intimacy, and each of these phases must work synchronically to be able to maximize uh, the pleasure that couples have a, in marriage uh, when it comes to love making. And so we're going to look at the part one of the ar arousal stage of uh, love making. And as usual, uh, uh, we want to look at the biblical text uh, that supports this. Our first text is taken from Songs of Solomon, uh, chapter 4, verses 7. Songs of Solomon 4, 7. Thou art, my, thou art all fair, my love, there is no spot in thee. <laughs> thou art all fair, my love. There is no spot in thee. And, and then the second text is also taken from the same Songs of Solomon, uh, the chapter 5 and the 16. It says, he is altogether lovely. This is my beloved, my friend. So as you can see, it looks like this is an interaction between uh, the Shunammite woman and Solomon, and uh, which obviously uh, talks of uh, the, uh, they, they are definitely in the act of love making, and they are singing the praises of one another. Thou art my love, there is, uh, thou art all fair, my love, there is no spot indeed. <coughs> so here you find. Uh, this husband uh, specifically uh, it, it telling this uh, loved one that she's all fair. She's taking a look at her old, whole body and he is admiring the totality of her beauty, the beauty of her body. And he's voicing it out. He's telling her, my love, thou art all fair. And 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 then so uh, he he sort of showers these sweet words on her and tell her there is no blemish in her body there is no spot in her body. Now uh, when you look at this verse, you say, well, I, I, I can't tell my wife that because she's not all fair and there are a lot of blemishes on my wife's body. Listen, uh, you you have to understand this. Your wife's body was specifically made for you. There may be blemishes, but as far as you are concerned, you have not seen any blemishes in her. And, and, and sometimes men just don't want to get this perception that their woman's body is the best and is the only body that he has in the whole wide world. So, whether you like it or not, you you need to accept that and appreciate her body. Now you say, well, yeah, I could say this to my wife when she was young, but after the babies have come, she's left herself and just I, I just can't sing such a praise uh, concerning my wife's body. Listen, you, you need to understand this. Um, your wife is just as lovely as she was before she had the babies. And the, 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 the issue of admiration is in the eyes of the beholder. If you cannot bring yourself to, to admire her body and love her body as it is, then you need to work with her 
in a way that it will not be insulting, but drawing her attention to the physical features of her body and the way you would want her to look. But as a man, you should appreciate the fact that she's giving you this children and genetically, uh, and it's not easy for her to go back and maintain that very shape that she was in when you, you first met. And so when you begin to dwell so much on the physical appearance of your wife, and you begin to convince yourself that there's no way you can shout or sing such a praise to her because her body is not really fair and she's not all lovely, then you have created this burial in your in, in your mind. You need to let your wife understand and hear this. True love comes from within. So even we are not asking you to lie about your wife's body, there are a lot of things that you can shower praise on your wife in this act of love making that will stimulate her. And it's not a matter of flattering her or telling lies about her body, but there are some good things that you know about your wife. And this is the time that you should shower those things on her. Okay, she may not have a fair body, but she has a black beauty. You can talk about that. You are the most beautiful. You have the most beautiful African skin that I have ever seen. I love your black beauty. You know, so the Shunammite woman was fair. And so the husband was saying, Dad, all fair. Your wife may not be fair, but there's something beautiful about your wife's skin. And you need to highlight on that, focus on that, and let her know, even in this act, that you appreciate her body and that. So uh, we want to come back to this whole issue. The time of sexual stimulation can be a delightful period for both husband and wife if they realize that the tender skill of foreplay will prepare them for the love acts itself in the future. Wooing and winning women is a common practice every woman desires from her husband. So the, the thing is this, um, you don't just wait till in the night when you want to uh, have l love making with your wife that you begin to uh, uh, try to uh, uh, shower her with praise or try to romance her. This whole thing has to begin the, the whole day. From the beginning, early morning, uh, the way you will leave the house, uh, planting a kiss on her and tell her, like, honey, I'm going to miss you. Just get ready for me. When I come home this evening, I need to see you in your best. You just need to get ready for me. Now, what you have done early in the morning is preparing her that you will be in the mood. And so if everything, all other things are equal, your woman in the morning will say, hey, Wow, what a lovely husband that I have. He can't wait to have me in the night when he comes back from work. Oh, I'll be thinking of you the whole day. I just can't look at any other woman. You know, these are things that you begin to say to your wife even before you leave for work in the morning. And you are preparing her towards the night. You don't wait till in the night, then you want to lunch on her and put in all the rumors. The women don't work their, that way. Their bodies don't work that way. It takes time for them. But if you skillfully do this, you can prepare her even before that time. Every woman loves a husband who woes her, who makes her feel special. He is, she is the only woman you have in the and in the same way. So the man should demonstrate his love for his wife by how. He approaches her rather than uh, claiming that he has a right to sex. It would be wise for the husband to avoid looking uh, hurried, crude, rude, uh, mechanical, or impatient. So this is the thing. Now, uh, it, uh, you know, uh, especially African men, we, we you have this feeling that, and you have this myth that, look, she's married to you, it's her responsibility to satisfy you. Yeah, that is true. Even in the Christian context, 
Some of you, this is the time that you want to quote First Corinthians chapter 7 uh, and quote Paul that, hey, your body belongs to me, it's mine. This is not the time for that, okay? Your wife understands that. But you need to understand that, look, you need to put her in the mood the whole day, far early. All other aspects of the marriage must be working well. If there's any aspect of it that is not working well, I can tell you from experience, uh, it's the, 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 the bedroom play is not going to work. She may do it out of compulsion, but it, you're going to see, it's going to be clear that she's just allowing you out of compulsion. And, and so that will not work. It is important that we avoid as men making our women feel that they have the responsibility to satisfy us, or because they are married to us, they must have sex with us, whether they are in the mood or not. That is wrong. It is not right. You need to let your woman understand that you value her and that you understand that there are times that she may not be in the mood. And for you women too, it is important the way you communicate that to your husband when you are not in the mood. There is a way that you can communicate that will not look offensive or rejected. The thing that hurts men a lot is when the man is in the mood and he wants to have you as a wife and you reject him or you indicate that you are not in the mood. The way you communicate that to him makes a whole lot of difference. Sometimes what we see of most women on bed, the man reaches out to touch your body and you quickly knock his hands out. Don't disturb me. Don't disturb me. I want to sleep. I'm not in the mood. Don't disturb me. Okay, so when this happens, um, then the man will feel rejected. But if you say, honey, let her hold him, let him hold you, and say, honey, I, I'm just so happy that you crave my body, you want to have intimacy with me, but please, um, I, 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 like, and, and I, I'd love to do it with you, but it, it's just not okay with me today. Can we do it tomorrow or next week or tomorrow next? You know, meanwhile, in doing so, you are holding him, you are caressing him, you are making him feel loved. He will understand it better and not become angry than you just totally knocking his hand off and saying you are not in the mood. Now, every understanding man, when you do that, especially even when you tell him you are not in the mood, and you give another date or time and still hold on to him in a loving manner and allowing him to touch your body for some time. And it might just be that she's not in the mood for insertion. She may be open to caressing of her body. Take what she's offering you and Intimacy, sexual intimacy does not only happen when you insert your penis into your wife's vagina. And that is what most men we look at. But there are several ways that we can fulfill each other's excitement than just the mere insertion of the penis into her vagina. So when she is not in the mood, we should take time to understand and let's communicate this appropriately so the man doesn't feel rejected and the woman too st still feels respected and not f have the feeling that uh, it is her responsibility to uh, satisfy you whether she likes it or not. So a sexual encounter might be a celebration of the couple's life together or reveal what is wrong in the relationship. So uh, sexual encounters tells a lot about uh, uh, the, what is happening in the relationship. 
and most uh, married counselors will get to know what is happening more in the marriage uh, when they start off by asking how many times they've had sex or when was the last time they had sex and had orgasm. Uh, it can open up a whole lot of things about the marriage. And believe me, uh, whatever the sexual stories are, the love-making stories are, invariably, a smart counselor can pick the vibes, can ascertain how healthy the marriage is from the stories that he hears from both couples with regards to their love-making. So um, it, it is important to, 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 to understand that. Since your sexual relationships tends to reflect your emotions and physical relationship, it is essential to understand that a loving, attentive attitude is often the basis for meaningful, delightful sexual acts. You see, so don't compartmentalize the act of love making from the everyday relational uh, things that you do to one another as couple. If you think that you can mess up, treat your wife anyhow, treat her like trash the whole day, my wife will always be the first to point it out to me, and then all of a sudden, uh, you want to have sex and you become all nice, it doesn't work that way, okay? So you, if there are issues that needs to be addressed in the marriage about the children, about finances, about other things in the home, you have to address them. Then that will give your woman the ease to be able to be in the mood or have the relaxed mind to be able to give herself wholly to you. And, and, and because if we make the mistake of separating the whole emotional makeup and the attitudes and the rest of the whole day from the act of sex, we are making a huge mistake. Women are involved. Every part of their body and their thoughts is involved in love making. So if you get any part of their attitudes wrong, you are not going to have her fully. That is uh, very clear, and it's important we understand that. Uh, so although you might think that sex act is separate, men should know that their wives see it as part of their uh, actual relationship. So sexual interaction becomes a dynamic expression of love when both partners give of themselves to each other physically uh, emotionally and spiritually. So whether you enjoy making love sexually depends on how you behave towards each other daily. So you cannot compartmentalize the sexual act of love making from the everyday relational behavior that you have for one another. You can't separate them. They are one. The more the relationship is intact, the more the act of sexual intercourse within the context of marriage is uh, more uh, fluent and uh, enjoyable. So let us understand that and try to keep the daily relationship very well. And I've said that, look, you can't uh, treat your wife as trash and then all of a sudden, think she can turn on the sexual aspect of her life. They are so, women are emotional. And nothing is going to happen to her body in the, in, in the context of sex if they, they are, they are, they are brains, their emotions are hurt, their heart is bleeding. You cannot get the best out of them when it comes to love making. And so, man, you cannot continue to hurt your wife, break her heart, and treat her as trash. And then all of a sudden, you want her to switch on and give you her full attention in the act of sexual intercourse. It, it, it doesn't happen that way. And the earlier, man, we get to understand this, the better. Every aspect of the relationships come into play when it comes 
to sexual intimacy. And so let us make the effort to keep it well, to keep the relationship, every aspect of that relationship intact. So when you play lovingly, you kiss, embrace, pet, and caress one another. A gentle caress of all the parts of the body is most effective uh, early in the sex foreplay for both men and women. So it is important. Please, I, I can't overemphasize this. And I'm guilty. I'm a cop. I'm guilty of this as well. Don't let us just focus so much on penetrating her. There's so much we can exploit with one another's body. And the longer we spend exploring one another's body, romancing one another, the better prepared the woman is. Now, it takes a few seconds. <laughs> Some men, I even doubt, are able to hold themselves for a minute or two without ejaculating. So, listen, and we will be treating and looking at these issues like ED, erectile dysfunction and the rest, and the things that you can do to, to be able to salvage or overcome those problems. But the point I'm making today is this. You easily are able to ejaculate as a man. It takes the woman a longer time. So the longer time, the longer you prolong the foreplay, the romance part, before the actual insertion of your penis into her vagina, the more you get her prepared. We have studied this uh, genitalia of the woman. And one of the things that kept coming out was how there are a lot of organs in the vagina that secretes lubrications that prepare her for the insertion of the penis. And when that preparation doesn't take place by the act of foreplay, romancing, kissing for some time, and you, the man, you just hurriedly want to insert and penetrate her, you hurt her. And she goes off the act feeling raped because why? You were not gentle and patient with her. You didn't allow her time to come. You didn't allow her time to lubricate her vagina very well. So in the act of the sexual intercourse, she was hurt because you forced your way through her and she, you bruised her. These are very sensitive parts of her body. And so any time that area is not well lubricated and you forcefully insert, believe me, it hurts. And it can hurt for days. And so you create in her this stigma. The next time you want it, she begins to shiver. So she doesn't concentrate on giving you pleasure, but the pain cuts her off and she never will gain orgasm. And that is why, man, let's be patient. And let's understand that the more we give her time and pleasurize her, the more we will be pleasurized. It is important. Do not be in a hurry. Take time to play with your wife's body. Get her ready before you insert. And it's not all about the insertion, which is usually what the man we have in mind. So your partner may enjoy receiving caresses on the inner thighs, okay, and the lower back of her buttocks, the ear loops, okay, and the back of the neck. Taking care of different areas demonstrate a genuine interest in the person. Solomon wrote, Thou art fair, my love. There are no spots in thee. How did Solomon know that? It means that Solomon had exploited every aspect of the wife's body. He had exploited every aspect of the wife's body. And so he could say this. 
even in the act of sexual intercourse and foreplay, he could sing the praise of the woman. And, and, and so when we take time to explore each other, we get to know the intricate parts of the body. And there's nothing wrong, even in that act of romance and foreplay, for you to sing praises of your partner. It helps. It turns women on more than anything else. So she also said to Solomon, altogether beautiful, as did his wife, the Shunammite maid, I love and admire her. So uh, it is an act of talk in romance that both the woman and the man exchange with one another. And it's very important and can spice up the romance and the love-making episode if you get to learn this and understand to use it in a way that is beneficial to both partners. So I want to encourage you, please, uh, don't give up. Spend time to study your wife's body. Get to know her body. Enjoy the body. And be careful and patient whenever you are going into this act. She's for you. There's no need to rush. The Lord gave her to you. Her body is yours. But please do it gently and respectfully and understand that the act of sexual intercourse begins way, way earlier than the night or than the bed or when you are ready and you want it. Uh, there may be situations where there are issues. And as always I say, there is nothing that is too difficult for our God. I'm going to pray that if there's any problem in this area, our God will solve it and help you to be able to enjoy one another in this act of sexual intercourse in the context of marriage. Let's pray. My Lord and Savior Jesus, thank you so much that you created sex and made it holy and acceptable in the midst of marriage and in the context of marriage. I come before your throne of grace, committing these married couples all over the world into your hands, especially Christian married couples who may be going through times of difficulty in this area of sexual intimacy. I come against the works of the enemy to destroy these marriages, and I pray that you will come true for them. Heal every situation in the marriage and help them to understand how much it is important that they begin to respect and honor each other even before this time of sexual intimacy. Thank you for your word today. In your precious name, I pray. Amen. Beloved, um, as I've usually said, please uh, click on the uh, left, right-hand corner. There is that red thing. Click on it and subscribe so that you will get the rest of the tapes or the episodes that follow. We, we will be going into serious techniques, uh, which will be very helpful for you and your partner. And I encourage you to stay tuned. Thank you for taking time to listen to today's uh, devotional podcast. Feel free to send me inbox messages, uh, put your comments on YouTube or any of our 15 podcast stations uh, that you may hear this uh, teaching from. Have a great day and God bless. Have a great weekend. Bye.